every now and then you come across a small piece of advice that makes you far more productive and all of a sudden you can't live without. Well in this video I'm going to quickly give you 50 of those for Clip Studio Paint which is an extremely powerful piece of software that's hiding so many little things that you might not know about. Some of these are more basic quality of life tools, while others are actually pretty insane. I'm not joking when I say my jaw actually dropped when I used some of these for the first time. Number one, if you press this button at the top left of your layers, you can split the layers into two separate views. This makes it far easier to manage a lot of layers, and for example, you can very quickly and easily move something from the very top to the very bottom of your layer orders. Number two, don't forget you can add any tool or color you want to the top bar here. I like to do this because it means if you're only working with your most basic tools, you can clear more space at the sides of the page. Number three, you can add 3D models into Clip Studio Paint. You can pose these and move them around and they can make as very useful references. Number four, inside layer, LT conversion of layer, you can make a 3D model or even a photograph look more like a 2D image which is useful to use as a background in, say, a webcomic that you're working on. Number five, and this is kind of a crazy one, if you go into File, Import, and then Pose Scanner, you can upload an image, and it will then take the pose from that image and implement it onto a 3D model. You can then move it around and use it as a reference, or use LT Conversion of Layer to make it look 2D. Number six, if you go into Layer Property and then Effects, there is this Border Effect tool, and this will put a permanent outline around everything on that layer. This is useful for putting an outline around something, of course, but maybe you're trying to draw wires or something like that, and it will essentially autofill the color and make your life a lot easier. Number seven, don't forget Clip Studio has auto actions. So if you go into Window Auto Action, there will be auto actions that you've either made or downloaded. So for example here, I have an auto action that adds chromatic aberration to an image, and I don't have to do anything, I just press the play button and then move some layers around and it's been done automatically. Number eight, if you press this button on the top left of your layer panel, you can color code your layers or your layer folders. Uh, makes life a lot easier sometimes. You can use these set colors or use the color picker to choose any color that you want. Number nine, if you've got a lot of layers and you're trying to pick a specific one but you don't know where everything is, you can just press Control shift and then click on any part of the image and it will automatically take you to the layer that you've clicked on. Number 10, if you press this button in the selection launcher, it will crop the image to this specific selection and that can make it much easier to make the canvas the specific size that you want. Number 11, if you want to pick a color from your canvas, the easiest way to do that is to hold down Alt and then click on the color that you want. Number 12, while color picking this way is far quicker, it will always take the color that's on top. So for example, if you've got a bunch of crazy effects going on and you want the color that's underneath those, you would have to turn off the layers that are above. But if you click on your color picker and then click pick color from layer, it will choose the color from the layer that you've currently selected so you don't have to turn off all the layers that are above it to get the color that you want anymore. Number 13, don't forget that Clip Studio can open Photoshop brushes. So there's a ton of options out there. You can very easily click and drag them into Clip Studio and it will automatically make them usable for you. Number 14, the comic layout for Clip Studio Paint is set up in more of a Japanese way by default. But if you right click, you can change the reading direction and you can also change your view to webtoon. So now if you're making a webcomic in the side panel that you'll have, it will show you a preview that will look almost exactly like the final webcomic well. Number 15, Clip Studio can record time lapses and it makes them very easy to save a speed paint of what you've done. It barely affects performance in my experience and it won't record you zooming in or anything like that. It's very useful to just leave it on and every now and then if you want to save something, it will have been recording it for you and you don't have to think about it. Number 16, if you've ever wanted manga style screen tones, you can do that from the selection launcher and then clicking on this button, it will give you a bunch of options and it will just fill it in for you and then you can erase whatever you need to get rid of. Number 17, if you click on this button, you can toggle the color wheel between a triangle and a square. Personally, I prefer the triangle because on the square, some of it is just a bit redundant. Number 18, if you've ever wanted your hex code, Clip Studio kind of hides this option. If you go to the color you're currently using and then double click, it will give you more advanced color settings, including your hex code right here. 
Number 19, if you've ever been unsure of a layer mode that you want to use or a font, something in one of these menus, you can actually scroll through it and you can very quickly get a preview of how different things look without having to constantly reopen the menu and click on the next option. Number 20, you can set a layer to be a reference layer and then if your other tools are set to refer to the reference layer, it can make it easier to color within the lines that you want to be using. Number 21, if you're trying to create something very clean and precise, vector layers have a ton of tools that make it far easier to get the exact stroke that you want. After the stroke is down you can very easily move bits around or change the thickness or change the color. This is really the tool you want to be using for any kind of super clean work that you're trying to make. Number 22, don't forget to flip your canvas. This is really important for getting a bit of a fresh eye at your work. I have a shortcut set on my tablet and I'll press it and it very quickly flips the canvas. There's no loading or anything like that. It's instant. You can also access this in the navigation panel. Number 23, if you've ever wanted to erase something that's on a layer that you can't find, or if you want to erase a bunch of stuff at once on a ton of different layers, there's actually a multi-layer erase tool, which will get rid of everything at once on the whole image, regardless of which layer it's on. Number 24, with this button, you can actually customize your selection launcher. So if there's something you use a lot after selecting, you can add a very convenient shortcut right here that will make it faster to get to that. Number 25, if you go into window and then subview, there's this very useful reference tool that will let you look at references while you draw. You can also color pick from the reference and use that in your image. Number 26, don't forget to use perspective grids if you're trying to do some difficult perspective or if you don't quite understand how to set up your own perspective grid yet. Go into layer, ruler slash frame and then create perspective ruler. And then you can select one, two and three point perspective. Number 27, if you're using perspective grids, the shape tools can actually snap to the perspective grid if you want, which can make things a lot easier. Number 28, don't forget about the absurd amount of brush options that Clip Studio has. On basically any tool, you can click the spanner down here and customize everything to your heart's content until it feels absolutely perfect. Number 29, don't forget to use the Clip Studio Asset Store. There's a ton of free and paid stuff on here. 3D models, auto actions, brushes, just about everything you could possibly need. Definitely don't forget to take advantage of this. Number 30, if you're trying to get an already existing image into Clip Studio, an easy way to do this is to copy it to your clipboard and then go into File, Create New from Clipboard and it will automatically create a canvas that's the exact same size as the image you're trying to import. Number 31, if you ever want to color pick from something that's not within Clip Studio itself, you can go into edit and then obtain screen color and you can pick a color from anywhere on your computer. If you've only got one monitor or if you're trying to get a color that's behind Clip Studio itself, you can click obtain screen color by hiding windows and that will automatically minimize Clip Studio and give you the color picker to choose whatever you wanted. Number 32, I would definitely recommend using the layer correction tools. So if you go into layer, new correction layer, there's a ton of really useful options here, including Tone Curve, which is a really great way to get more contrast into your image. 33, if you want your image to look a little bit less clean and digital, you can go into Filter, Render, Polar Noise, and that will give you this noise effect that you can adjust and put on top of your image. You can then use Layer Modes and Opacity to make this effect more or less apparent depending on what you're going for. Number 34, if you're animating, there's some really useful options when it comes to onion skin settings. You can change the color for the frames that we showed before or after, or you can change how many frames before or after the current frame will show when you have onion skin turned on. Number 35, gradient maps can be extremely useful to make quick adjustments to color. Using these, you could make an image completely in black and white and then put gradient map layers on top that will turn those tones into color. Then if you need to make quick adjustments, even with entire colors that you've used, it's really simple to do this. Number 36, if you're making a PDF or a comic, something like that in Clip Studio, you can go into File, Export Multiple Pages, and then 3D Preview for Binding. This will automatically create a 3D model of a book with your images in, so you can see how it would look if it was printed. Number 37, did you know that you can actually drag these image tabs around even to different monitors? So for example, if you wanted to, you could take an image canvas out of Clip Studio itself, move it somewhere else and draw on it on a completely blank page. You could also use this to use one canvas as a reference while you're drawing on another one. 
Number 38, make sure you set up your keybinds to make your life a lot easier. There's also a really useful tool called modifier keys, which means you hold that key down to make it active instead of having to click and then click onto the next option. So for example, how you hold down alt to color pick, you could for example, hold down a button of your choice to use the eraser instead of having to click on the eraser and then click back to your brush. Number 39, if you want to get a little bit crazy with using the warp tools to paste a flat image that you've made onto a 3D surface that you're trying to create, you can use the mesh transformation tool and this gives you far more freedom with warping the image in any way that you want. Number 40, Clip Studio has a ton of really useful features for creating comics. So for example, you can create these comic panels that will keep your work far more organized and it will keep you drawing inside the panel only so you don't have to then go and erase anything that went out of the selection that you've created. Number 41, this also applies to speech bubbles. Their speech bubble tools are really cool. You you can create a speech bubble, add the text inside of it, and then they make adding a tail to that speech bubble extremely easy. You can use speech bubbles or thinking bubbles, or you can draw your own tail. It's a really streamlined way of creating a comic. Number 42, inside your tool for shapes, there are some extra tabs for effects that are useful for comics and manga specifically, but you could use anywhere within your art really. They make it really easy to create lines that imply an explosion or a strong focus, that kind of thing. You just drag and drop them in and Clip Studio will automatically do all the work for you. Number 43, there's multiple ways to organize your tools, so make sure you set it up in a way that's the most convenient for you. You can add as many segments as you want to this side panel here, or within each tool, you can have multiple folders and organize it all. It's really, really useful to get this stuff set up in a way that makes you as productive as possible. Number 44, if you find yourself going into the tool properties a lot, you can actually check this selection here where the little eye will show up and that will make this option show up in the easily accessible tool properties, making it far easier to quickly access it. At the same time, you can uncheck this option to get rid of clutter that you're not often using. Number 43, I think it's really useful to create some document presets that you'll use. You can save these and it makes it far easier to always have the settings that you want. So the right resolution, the right page color, have recording time lapses on by default. It's much easier to save some of these and then select them than it is to go into these settings every time you want to create a new document. Number 46, you don't only have to use pixels in Clip Studio. If you go to the unit settings here when you're creating a new document, you can use centimeters, millimeters, inches, anything you want, which can be far more useful for printing. It also has preset sizes for different pages, so A5, A4 for example, and this can make it much easier to get the specific size that you want. Number 47, if you're constantly using the lasso tool to create a shape and then clicking the fill tool to fill it in, there's actually an easier way to do this. Hidden inside direct draw where your shapes are, there is a tool called lasso fill, and this will automatically fill in the shape that you've created when you use the lasso tool. Number 48, if you're going to edit, there's a tool called Convert Brightness to Opacity. This will take an image and keep the darker parts more opaque, while the lighter it is, the more transparent it will become, to the point where white just becomes completely transparent. You never know when this kind of tool might save you, trying to remove a white background that you've put in by accident or something like that. Number 49, make sure you customize your layouts to be the best for you. You can move all of these windows around, you can hide certain windows and then have them easy to access just by pressing these arrows. If you go into the window tab at the top, there's also a ton of extra windows that you can implement into your workspace or this is how you get windows that you've removed that you don't often use. And number 50, you can actually save these workspaces. So you can go into window, workspace, register workspace and you can save these to easily switch between different workspaces if you want. Even cooler, you can actually sync these with the cloud. So if you move to a different computer or device, or if you lose your data, you can actually re-download your workspace and automatically apply it. So you don't have to recreate it again. Or if you're too lazy to do it yourself, or if you want to see what other people are doing, you can download workspaces from the Clip Studio Asset Store. Most of these are free, so you can just download what other people are using as their setup and see what you think. So that's 50 quick tips for Clip Studio Paint. Hopefully you learned some interesting stuff for this video. Definitely let me know in the comments if there's anything important that I missed. There's so many things in Clip Studio that I'm sure the stuff that's completely crazy that I don't even know about yet. So definitely put it in the comments. And if there's enough, maybe I'll make another video like this. Uh, there probably is to be fair. I know there's gonna be a ton that's just hiding from me in all these menus. Let me know what you thought of this video. If you like this kind of content, I'm trying to create content that has more longevity to it and is more useful, I guess. But uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed. And that's gonna be it for now and goodbye.